So our last objective for unit six is 6.4D. And we will do one more problem or two more problems tomorrow on the back of this note page, but it won't be a formal note page. It's just something that I forgot to type into the notes. And we'll focus on it tomorrow because we have time to do that. It's a little, it's different than this, so let's not mix up the strategies. So today's topic is solving more advanced exponential equations. And we'll employ our quadratic strategies in order to help us solve these because the other strategies we learned will not help us at all. So your objective, you can use exponent rules, substitution, strategies for solving quadratics, and your log properties to solve these more advanced exponential equations. Listen, you're going to use your algebra skills. What? That is what you're going to do. So here we go. Um, First, I've got a little space up here to make a couple of notes. Here's what I want you to notice. All equations have three terms. Mm, some of them equal zero, but that, that term doesn't count. Okay? And, you, and they can't be simplified. by combining like terms or anything like that. So, um, when they have three terms and they can't be simplified, the first thing I always try is to use my quadratic strategies because the likelihood that they will work is very, very high. Um, so, um, we're going to employ Strategies for solving quadratics. That's a Q. Quadratics, i.e. factoring, uh, completing the square, quadratic formula, or square root property. And yeah, I'm being a little lazy, but you've heard me talk about all those things many times. So we're going to try that. The likelihood is high when you have a three-term equation that you have to solve for X that you can use your quadratic strategies to help you get those solutions. So a couple of reminders. I'll put them over here off to the side. I did say that you're going to have to use your, ex, your exponent rules. Okay. So a couple of things we need to remember. B to the X cannot equal zero. B to the X can also not equal a negative. Okay? When we're solving exponential equations and logarithmic equations, our base is always positive. Okay? Also, exponent rule that says this. If I have B raised to the X times Y, I can expand that out, that's a power to a power, to b to the x raised to the y power. We will employ that strategy to help us solve these equations. The other one that we will use often, when you see b to the negative x, that's the negative exponent. We're going to evaluate the negative exponent. Okay, now so those are the things that you need to keep in mind as we're going through these problems. All right, so I'm going to pick up my pencil, <clears throat> read the instructions, solve the equation for x, give the exact solution, and estimate to four decimal places. Okay, so we're solving for x. My first equation here has three terms. I cannot combine any of them. They are not like terms. E to the 2x is different than... 2e to the 1x minus 15. Different, different, different. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use substitution. So actually, I'm going to pick up my red pen one more time. I'm going to rewrite e to the 2x as e to the x squared. Because I'm trying to create that quadratic 
um, exponent fault. Exponent 2, exponent 1, exponent none, and equals 0. Okay? Plus 2e to the x minus 15 equals 0. So I have that 2, 1, none, and 0. Quadratic practice. Next thing I'm going to do. Now I want to try to factor that. Because I can find the factors of negative 15 that add to 2. But this e to the x might be throwing you off. So here's my suggestion. Let's let e to the x equal y. So that we can just simplify this process a little bit. So we'll use some substitution here. And then maybe we'll see directly how quickly we can get to a solution. So I'm going to replace this e to the x and this e to the x with a y. So a y and a y, and I'm going to pick up my pencil and do everything else in pencil. So y squared plus 2y minus 15 equals 0. And that probably feels a lot more comfortable to your eyes and to your mind of how we would you want to factor. Or do you want to use quadratic formula? What do you want to do? I think factoring. So y plus 5 and y minus 3 equals 0. And then so we have y equals negative 5 and y equals 3. Except we weren't asked to solve for y. We were asked to solve for x. So what we need to do now is resubstitute. So we're going to let y return to e to the x power. So I'm going to substitute back in my e to the x. So I simplified the process. Now I'm going back to the original problem. Just use an alternate strategy to get there. Now here's my question to you. Can e, which is, remember e is like 2.72, e to any power equal a negative. No solution there. So that's extraneous and we have to throw it out. But here we have e to the x equals 3. We can do two things. We can either convert it to a natural log, plug it into the calculator, or we can take the log of both sides power down. What do you want to do? Convert? Convert? Okay. So we're going to convert. So the natural log of base e, which we won't write base e, that's redundant, of 3 equals x. So that is our exact solution. Exact. All we have to do now is plug it into the calculator. I have my notes right in front of me. Solution is 1.0986. And there are our solutions. So that one was a pretty basic one. Not a lot to trip you up, but definitely a good introduction. Let's look at B. B looks a little more complex. Why is that? Which part? The negative x? Negative exponent? Okay, now I'm going to rearrange this problem because I want it in quadratic form, so I want it in cascading order. 2, 1, none. Zero. So I'm going to move the 5. As I move the 5 over, I'm going to evaluate this as 1 over e to the x. So e to the x plus 4. I'm going to open up a parenthesis and I'm going to use substitution. So I'm going to grab my red pen here just a second. Minus 5 equals 0. And, and using my red pen, substitute 1 over e to the x for e to the negative x. So this is the problem that I have. It doesn't feel very good. And it doesn't look like this where we have x squared, x to the first, and no x and 0. And I want to make it look like that so I can use my quadratic strategies. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the fraction by multiplying the whole equation by e to the x so I can get e to the x out of the denominator. So I'm going to go e to the x times the whole thing. So e to the x plus 4 times 1 over e to the x minus 5 equals 0. Can you guys close the door, please? Thanks, Natalie. Like, totally rude. 
I don't even know how that's going on. Continue. All right, you ready? So I'm going to multiply here. E to the x times e to the x is e to the x squared, right? And that looks just like this. I like it. And then e to the x times, it's going to cancel that one out. So that's just going to be 4 times 1, which is 4, minus 5 times e to the x equals 0 times e to the x, which is 0. So clearing the fraction by distributing e to the x to everything. Now, it's still not in cascading order. Down 2, that's 2, none, 1. We need 2, 1, none, so let's rearrange. So that's e to the x squared minus 5 times e to the x plus 4 equals 0. And now let's employ our, our strategy of using substitution. So let's let e to the x again equal y and replace e to the x with y's. So we get y squared minus 5y plus 4 equals 0. And then we'll decide here what we want to do to solve that quadratic. What do you want to do? Factor again? I think it'll factor nicely. So y and y, opening up your binomial pairs. Factors of positive 4 that add to negative 5. Negative 1 and negative 4 is correct. All right, so we know y equals 1 and y equals 4. Again, we weren't asked to find y. We were asked to find x. So let's reinsert. We'll let y return to e to the x. So e to the x and e to the x equals 1 equals 1. This first one, I'm hoping you can immediately see the answer. e to what power equals 1 every time? x equals 0 is correct. And this is supposed to be a 4, so let me change that to a 4. Now, 2.72 to the x equals 4, that's not something I know right away. So I would convert this to a lot, the natural log. The natural log of 4 equals x. And then I just plug that into the calculator to get its approximation. 1.0. I'm a calculator. 3863. So you have x equals 0. And x equals the natural log of x. And I really should clean that up. Or x is approximately 1.3863. And there you have your solutions. Exact and approximate. Okay? We're going to do one more together, number C. And then you're going to do D. Yes, in algebra, C is a number. Don't you know? I could say, what is C? And you'd have to solve for C, and you'd say, C is 5. It's a number. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go through that same process again. But notice, this is not e to the x. This is 4 to the x. Same thing, same idea, just a 4 to the x now. Okay, so same process as before. Going to rearrange, and as I bring this 8 over to here, I'm going to drop 4 to the negative x into the 4 to the 1 over 4 to the x. So we have 4 to the x minus 3 times, I'm going to open up my parentheses and use my substitution, minus 8 equals 0, and convert 4 to the negative x into 1 over 4 to the positive x. Now in this one, I'm not going to go to a, an all a separate step to clear the fraction. If you're okay, I'm going to go ahead and just clear the fraction here. Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Since the first example has it step by step. So how do I, what, what am I going to use to clear the fraction? 4 to the x, because I want to clear that out of that denominator. So we would multiply there. So that would be 4 to the x times 4 to the x, which is 4 to the x squared minus 3 minus 8 times 4 to the x, which equals 0 times 4 to the x, which is 0. So that's just distributing that 4 to the x to everything, clearing out that 4 to the x. Rearrange so that it's in descending order to 1, none. So 4 to the x squared minus 8 times 4 to the x minus 3 equals 0. and then we're going to let 4 to the x equal a, just for fun. 
A. So I'm going to replace with A and A. You can let, of course, continue to let it equal Y if you wish. It doesn't matter. You can pick any variable you want. Pick your favorite variable. In fact, you could pick a triangle or a square or a flower. It doesn't matter. It's an unknown. Okay. So listen, folks. This is not going to factor. No, it is not. So um, I'm going to complete the square because I can see how easy this one will be to complete the square. If you want to diverge and do a square um, quadratic formula, you can. But I'm going to complete the square. So a squared minus 8, move the 3 to the other side, 8a, sorry, and make a space. Cut your b term in half and square it. So half of negative 4, half of negative 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. Ooh, and I want to do that with red. So plus 16 on both sides still equals the same thing as the other one. Okay, and then we factor. So we're looking for the factors of... 16 that add to negative 8, and that's negative 4 and negative 4. So I'm just using my square root, my complete the square property there. Then square root both sides, so that's a minus 4 equals plus or minus square root of 19. And I'm going to add that 4 in, so we get a is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 19. And then what we need to do is go and let A, and I mean to do this in red, let A in this case, can you have my red pen thing? Equal four to the X. So I'm gonna go and reinsert my four to the X. So four to the X and four to the X equals four plus the square root of 19. And 4 to the x equals 4 minus the square root of 19. And then I'm just really suspicious about this 4 minus the square root of 19 because I think the square root of 19 is higher than 4. Because the square root of 16 is 4. So the square root of 19, I think, is 4.3 something. So that's going to be 4 minus 4.3. That's negative. 4 to the x cannot equal a negative 0.3, so I'm going to throw that solution out. No good. This other one, I'm actually going to have to convert. So log base 4 of 4 plus the square root of 19 equals x. And then if you don't have a calculator that does base 4, you know you're going to have to use change of base formula. So the log of 4 plus the square root of 19 over the log of 4 equals x. And then, of course, give you your approximation. It's 1.5 something, but I'm not sure. Oh, I have it right here. 5317. And that one just required change of base because you don't have log base four button on the scientific calculator that you're using. I think the newer scientific calculators do. The new versions of the ones you're using actually do have that button. Well, it's not a button, but you can, it has that capability. Questions? Okay, so you guys are going to do D without me. I'm telling you the solutions right now. X is equal to two and one and um you can probably see the answer in the last step without converting to a logarithm if you use your brain and you stop for a moment and think okay so i'm going to say bye for now and your homework tonight is problems 22 and 24 so basically you're doing d 22 and 24 for homework